um, I want to describe what what's hap happening. I want to describe something specific. So, um, something prevents <coughs> prevents me from sleeping, right? <coughs> something prevents me from sleeping. So I had. Um, three hours of sleep. <coughs> <coughs> My throat feels dry. I had three hours of sleep. And when I woke up, uh, look, this was hours ago. I woke up, let's see, five hours ago, I woke up. When I woke up, Five, I woke up five hours ago and I've been laying here in the dark with my eyes closed trying to sleep. But when I woke up, <clears throat> the sleep that I had was really good. I woke up and went to go to the bathroom. And, you know, I was really sleepy and not using CPAP. And it felt like you know, three hours of quality sleep and, and I'm so tired and I just can't wait to get back in here to close my eyes and sleep again. And I'm a hundred percent sure that I'm going to sleep. <clears throat> so when I'm in the bath, when I'm in the bathroom, I feel okay. My breathing does not feel messed up, but I, I never thought about my breathing. I wasn't conscious of that at all but I also wasn't struggling I don't think but I think severe shallow breathing is so normal for me that it it feels normal even though it's medically not okay so but I'm not conscious of of how I was breathing I just felt you know normal I felt severely tired and I thought well I'm just I'm just gonna go back and just instantly fall asleep no I came back in here and I'm gasping I'm I'm suffocating I feel like I'm suffocating and I feel like I'm gasping for air but I'm not going. <gasps> I feel like I'm suffocating and I'm trying to figure out and I'm trying to relax. Like I'm trying to think what's wrong. Like there's something medically happening here. Like something specific and medically happening. And what it felt like is like, okay, I'm, I'm here with my eyes closed. I'm trying to fall asleep. I feel like I'm suffocating and I feel like I'm filling up with air. My chest or my gut is, f no, not my gut. My chest is filling with air or maybe I'm, you know, filling up with carbon dioxide and it feels like something is the gas exchange or something is wrong in, in my lungs, but it feels like I'm suffocating. It feels like I'm filling up with air. This started with the benzodiazepine withdrawal. There was so much damage to my body from this, from that withdrawal. My, I was, I swear on my life that I was in respiratory failure. My lungs were collapsing and I was in complete respiratory failure and they sent me home like in that condition. My lungs were just stopping. My lungs were just flattening out. I couldn't lay down to breathe anymore. I couldn't, 
couldn't lay down at all. My, my lungs would just flatten out and my breathing would stop. And I was in respiratory failure. I, I a hundred percent believe that. And I was retaining carbon dioxide. I know that. Because a year or or even longer ago, a year later than that or whatever, I went to the ER and I forced them to do the arterial. They ram a big needle in the artery and it's not a little simple blood test. And I was retaining carbon dioxide awake. So I know I'm retaining carbon dioxide when I'm asleep because my breathing is way, way more shallow asleep. So much damage was done from the benzo withdrawal. And I wonder all what, what damage has been done, but they won't, they won't admit or acknowledge anything. Right. I had stabbing, I had pain in my lungs and stabbing pains in my heart. I think for the first two years or longer, my ankles and feet swelled up huge. My feet were swollen huge. I couldn't get shoes on my feet at all. The tops and bottom of my feet were swollen. I couldn't even walk. My ankles were swollen like tree trunks. So that's the heart, I think. No, they wouldn't acknowledge that they, you know, they wouldn't acknowledge what was happening to me. No one mentioned heart. It took me a few years to find out that, that those are heart symptoms. I couldn't climb stairs. I couldn't lift my arms to, you know, blow dry my hair or anything. That's heart. <laughs> When I exhale, like just right now, when I exhale, I feel like my lungs are never going to take another breath. I literally feel like I'm dying. And that could be still, you know, from respiratory failure or like that might not be the Chiari. That might be leftover damage from respiratory failure or, um, you know, my lungs were collapsing. I wish you guys could hear the appointments with the respirologist and the, uh, the sleep respirologist, the gaslighting, the, you know, we're not talking respectful, respectful verbal exchanges. We're talking, you know, a desperate patient and you can hear them withholding information. You can hear the disrespect. You can hear that, you know, my chain is being yanked, right? You can hear that information is being withheld. Not, you know, I mean, they might have ideas of what, what has happened. They might know, they might have suggestions or, you know, but you can hear all of it's being withheld, right? If you heard this conversations, you can hear the gaslight and you can hear that, you know, there's someone in a position of power that's yanking the other guy's chain, right? You can hear the gaslighting. You can hear that someone doesn't want to be forthcoming or helpful. So, you know, I had a couple hours of sleep. I go to have a pee. I come back. I'm a hundred percent sure I'm going to fall asleep and I'm suffocating. And I feel like I'm gasping for air. Only I'm not gasping. I feel like my carbon dioxide is high and I feel like my oxygen is low. I put the oximeter on my oxygen is a little bit low. But there's something wrong. There's something happening. 
that's that I can't breathe. And you can't breathe when well, you can't fall asleep when you can't breathe. It's like if you're running a marathon and you're running and running and running, like let's say for 45 minutes, you're running, 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 uh, running a marathon. And, and then someone says, lay down and breathe, lay down, fall asleep, lay down, fall asleep. You can't because you're gasping for air. Can't just lay down, close your eyes and fall asleep. Because your chest is heaving, you're gasping for air, right? And that's what it's like. I wake up, I go pee, I come back. I'm, I'm, my, my body is gasping, but I'm not going, <gasps> it's like something's quietly happening here and I'm suffocating. And I don't know if, uh, if, if my carbon dioxide is raised, getting higher and higher, or I, I feel like my chest is being filled with air uh, or but I'm not gasping so how could my chest be filling up with air and then the thing of you know after I exhale I literally feel like I'm dying I feel like my lungs are not going to take another breath you know I'm sleeping here upright in a chair but I can't sleep on my back. Like I can't sleep like this because I can't breathe. Like my lungs are still dam. I mean, still damaged. They're probably permanently damaged from all the damage from those two medication withdrawals. I have to sleep like completely on my side, this side or the other side, even upright. I can't sleep on my back. If that makes any sense, my lungs can't do it. But all this is not just from medication damage or medication withdrawal because before the, those two deadly medication withdrawals, I was only sleeping one or two hours a night. And why was that happening? Why was I sleeping three hours a night for years or one or two hours only a night for a year prior to the medication withdrawal? Was that from medications? Were the medications actually killing me they were harming me in many ways but i all you know they were screwing up my breathing absolutely but how much does the chiari malformation take place how much is the chiari affecting my sleep but i wish i wish the world could hear all those conversations with the the medical appointments and you can hear the gaslighting. I don't know why. And, and I'm demonized in my medical, uh, records, you know, there's all sorts of really terrible things written about me and my behavior and, you know, somebody who's manipulating you will call you manipulative. Someone who, who is lying will will you know often call think think thinks that everybody else lies like crazy the terrible things terrible things about me in my medical records if if many it's not like that for everybody i've been medically injured many times so that stacks up the lies in my medical records. I've been misdiagnosed several times. So that stacks up the lies. You know, I've, I've called doctors out. I've said, you know, like, I think the medications that I'm on are making me sick. 
that stacks up the lies. I think I'm being misdiagnosed. I don't think you have that right. You know, sleepwalking and sleep eating for decades from a medication. My depression and premenstrual dysphoria disorder and ADHD and medication resistant depression and major depressive disorder and sleep related eating disorder and sleepwalking and sleep eating. All went away when I went off psych medications. You know what they think about me when I say that? They call me a liar. My, I, we, you know, these doctors told me if I weaned off the psych medications, you're going to die. My doctors, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, I started saying, I think all these medications that you're giving me are making me sicker. I can't get well. Like my brain fog is just, it feels like there's, and these are the exact words I was saying. It feels like there's a black blanket over my head and I feel like I can't see to the end of the block. The brain fog is so bad. Like I can't even think straight there. There's post-it notes on every room in the house. I'm so depressed. I'm so tired. I'm so sleep deprived. My brain is scrambled. I can't concentrate. I've done everything to get well. I think the medications that you're giving me are making me sicker because that's the only thing I haven't tried yet to get well is to get off the medications. I've tried everything else. And they looked at me and said, you will die. The, the medications are keeping you alive and you will die if you go off the medications. And I'm like, are you, do you really think this? Like I'm looking at these people thinking like two individuals, pardon me, two individual doctors. And I'm looking at them thinking, are you out of your mind or am I out of my mind? Like, are you, is there something wrong with you? Is this outrageous that you actually believe this? And I said to them, do you actually believe that? And they said, yes, I do. Separately. Two different good doctors. Yes, I do. And I thought, Either you're out of your freaking mind and you're wrong or I'm wrong or I'm delusional. So I went home and, and started to wean off the medications and I, I felt better and better and better and better, like, like almost immediately. And the depression went away. The brain fog went away. The ADHD went away. Like the depression went away. It was bloody amazing. You know how terrible depression is, right? The ADHD went away. The premenstrual dysphoria every month went away. Uh, seasonal affective disorder went away. Every fall and winter, I would get so, so depressed, so anxious. That's gone. That's been gone for eight, nine years now. Like all of this was like eight, nine years ago. I continued to wean off the sleep medications. My sleep eating went away. The sleep walking went away. The cognitive issues went away. So how do you think these doctors, you know what doctors say when I tell them this? You're, you're out of your mind. You're delusional. That just can't be. They can't, they can't grasp the gravity of that, that at times they're making, or they or their colleagues are making patients sicker and sicker and sicker with drugs. So what do you think is, what kind of things do you think are in my medical record? She's delusional. She's saying we're making her sicker. 
She's saying doctors are out to get her. She's paranoid. She's manipulative. She's trying to get drugs out of us. She's anti-drug. She's this. She's that. She's got these mental disorders. She's got those mental, mental disorders. You should see the shit show in my, she's blaming us that she got medically injured from an epidural. She's saying that a doctor injured her, injured her sinuses. She's saying this, she's saying that she almost got killed from a medication. She's delusional. She's manipulative. She's making up stories about us. That's exactly what's in my medical records. So you're a, an adult with me, that kind, kind of shit show in your medical records. You go to try to get medical help from somebody and they read all of that about you before you walk through the door. How do you think you're received? Do you think you're treated respectfully? Most often you won't get through that door. Your referral will be denied. This is what they can create about you. When you're medically injured, when you're misdiagnosed, when when they get things wrong, when you're injured in surgery. So try being complex, a complex patient and a complex patient with rare, rare diseases that doc, most doctors know nothing about. So Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and, um, um, Chiari malformation. And on top of that, the complexity of medication injuries that they will not acknowledge. And on top of that, you're demonized already in your medical records. Imagine that. Awful, awful. Not that they can just do this to me, but they're doing this to other people as well. They're not out to get us, but this is the behavior. This is, you know, it's, it's horrifying. But I wanted to talk specifically about my symptoms and, and, and I didn't want to get into all of that, but I can't breathe. I, 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 and this is like literal torture. Like, I don't know if there's any way out. There probably isn't. <laughs> 